You are listening to Masters Cast. This is Masters Cast, episode number 19, special edition, San Diego Comic Con 2006. All right, it is uh, Sunday, July 31st, 2006, and we are back from San Diego, sunny San Diego. I am John Callis, also known as The Shadow. I'm Josh the Lion Court, also known as Lion Court. And I'm Katie Carty, also known as Rainbow Bright. So guys, back from San Diego. I miss it already. Me too. Me, Me too. too. It was a lot of fun. <sighs> I'm a sad, total guys. Blast. I'm sad. I we should wanna... just all move there. I know, I didn't want to leave. <laughs> I know, I didn't get to see you guys enough during the convention. We need to change it to, like, Eternos is now <laughs> San Diego, you know. There you go. Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> Actually, if, if they're going to do that, it would probably end up being Chicago, because I think a lot more .orgers go there, right? Yeah, but I'd rather live in San Diego. It's so sunny and nice. I suppose that's true. It yeah. Was really we nice. can get them to navigate... To um, San Diego. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how it is. You know what I'm saying. All right. So San Diego, of course, was jam-packed with He-Man and She-Ra fun. Fun in the sun. Um, they did uh, BCI Eclipse, who are putting out She-Ra and all the God knows how many other Filmation titles, right, on DVD. Uh, were a part of the Tower Records booth. And they had a huge She-Ra display. I mean, I'm talking like the size of a wall. Uh, there to attract uh, attract the uh, customers, if you will. Two two TV screens playing the introductions to filmation shows. They had an awesome uh, handout um, that was real glossy and colorful, and I mean, people just ate them up. They ate them up. Um, so and don't we, forget the tattoos. Oh yes, they had free tattoos. Uh, Shira, Flash Gordon, Ultraman. Uh, those were going like uh, crazy, especially uh, He-Man, or excuse me, She-Ra on Swiftwind and Ultraman. They, I think those two were the most popular. I was working the booth. I worked the booth preview night uh, all day Thursday and uh, different at different periods uh, throughout uh, uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, so I want to give a big, big uh, you know uh, shout out to BCI Eclipse and Jeff Hain and everyone else that works at BCI Eclipse uh, for letting me work at the booth. That was great, great experience, and uh, I, I, I have to say they did a fantastic job at promoting She-Ra, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I was totally impressed with all the, like you said, um, the big banner and the handouts and just the big to-do they made about it, especially also with the DVDs that they were selling. They were giving away free T-shirts to go along with them, so that was the big yeah. selling point, I think. And the She-Ra shirts were really cool, so yeah, they really did it. Yeah, wow. they, they had a uh, a white shirt with the She-Ra logo for guys, and they had a baby doll pink uh, T-shirt with uh, She-Ra on Swiftwind for the girls. All the T-shirts sold out, so those DVDs were moving like hot cakes. That's oh, awesome. Hot cakes. Where'd that come? No, I did, uh, they're moving like you know, <laughs> like winning lottery <laughs> tickets. <laughs> well, hot cakes kind of works. I mean, the CDs are the right shape, or the DVDs. I guess. <laughs> but uh, uh, real quick, um, the best of She-Ra uh, DVD is in stores now. It came out last Tuesday, and it contains the best five episodes as voted on by fans. And it also contains the feature-length movie, The Secret of the Sword, which is the origin of She-Ra. This will be the only way you can obtain the theatrical cut of The Secret of the Sword, which is technically the first five episodes of She-Ra. So definitely pick up the DVD if you haven't. It has a spectacular spectacular cover um, and there will also be a limited edition um, Secret of the Sword um, DVD cover variant that will be available at Wizard World Chicago so if you stop by the MV Creations booth you can pick that up for $35 or you can pre-order it at He-Man.org check out the main page for that it is limited to a thousand copies each copy is numbered and let me say guys you do not want to miss this I'm looking at it right now the cover is fantastic it's old school um, throwback to um, the movie poster and the, the comic book uh, cover of Secret of the Sword. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. I agree. It's beautiful. <laughs> so you guys want to pick that up. So make sure you have it. We'll have a review of the She-Ra DVDs 
um, probably in the next, uh, not the next episode, but the episode after that, unless we. Tag we should it. also we should also mention that the special edition Secret of the Sword comes with two unique art cards that aren't going to be available anywhere else. And the entire and, inside is different, except for the DVDs as well. Yeah, yeah, and they and uh, also we should mention those DVDs. In addition to the Secret of the Sword, uh, the, the feature length Secret of the Sword has a commentary track. And there's also a documentary on Shira as well. Yes, yeah, so definitely, definitely check this out. And I have to say, big props to how they did the commentary this time and the direct or the editing of the documentary. Steps above um, the He-Man stuff. They are definitely finding their footing now, and I really hope uh, that, that that same style continues. I'm really, really liking it. Uh, so big yeah, props. Yeah, I totally agree props. with you there. So uh, back now we to, also need to well, we also need to cover moving to the next thing, and this is usually the thing that you toss in my court is the uh, four horsemen's line at the comic con as well. Mm-hmm. They've got they have a lot of stuff on display for us uh, this year. We've got uh, we got our first look at Rio Blast. What'd you guys think? He was totally awesome. I still don't like the character. No offense. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I I despise Rio Blast even even more than Stinkor or or Snout Spout from the classic line. But I actually really like the new version. They did a really good job. They toned down the cowboy aspects, which was really my biggest problem with the original. And I'm actually really happy with the way he turned out. Well, uh, we also. Oh, um, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, one thing that bothers me is his his face looks a little uh, man at arms. I don't want him to be another brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, since the cartoon has gone out of production, I don't think we need to worry about it. I mean, hey, do whatever you want him to be. There could be a description, man. But go ahead, uh, continue on what I else we saw. Worry about. Okay, uh, we saw, let's see, we've got, there's going to be a uh, Action Figure Express exclusive King <laughs> Randor, which is really cool. He's a little bit different, got a different head sculpt, uh, a fur, like a, a real fake fur cape, uh, and uh, yes, fake sh- fur. <laughs> Peta, <laughs> don't come after them. That's right. <laughs> and, a, and a shield, uh, a shield uh, which has been burned by the acid thrown at him in the pilot episode. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and of course, he will not come with the Four Horsemen logo base that the San Diego Comic Con exclusive did. Uh, we also saw a new version of Cobra Khan who looked a bit different and uh, is also going to be an exclusive, although they don't know from where yet. Uh, we got our first look at Squeeze, which I'm not a big fan of the character. The the uh, the uh, new design is pretty cool. What you guys think of that one? It was yeah, good. It was huge. Of course, it was like the big one. It wasn't the actual size of what it's going to be. But yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, they did mention that they're not sure yet how they're going to manage to package him, so that should be interesting when that comes along. Um, Of course, uh, we found out that there will be a regular release of Evil Lynn uh, in Wave 5, and she will come with Screech, who looks really awesome. I was really pleased, and I'm glad that they kind of gave us a little filmation uh, nod in that as well, in the fact that he has mechanical... Pieces and of course Screech was a mechanical uh, bird in yeah. the filmation Screech series. Screech was my favorite thing at, at their booth. Yeah, very well done. And he comes with a nice little stand that looks a lot like the uh, original stand that uh, Screech had. Yes. Very very nice. Uh, let's see. We've got to see the Zodak mini bust, which will be uh, released sometime in the not too distant future. That was really cool. I, I'm really glad that the mini bust line is continuing. And Zodak happens to be one of my favorite characters, so that was a that was nice to see him there. Uh, we got to see a new 14-inch He-Man statue. Uh, that uh, he's a little bit beefier, looks a little different than the Comic-Con one of 2001. Uh, really, really nice. I really need to get some money together to get these big statues. I, right. I, <laughs> I, I really want them. I did like it, but I do like the the. What is, was it? Two thousand one uh, Mattel Comic Con statue. That, no, I love the the original yeah. one as well. Yeah. I just this I, one and was two, also it's, very cool. You know, the Mattel one was made out of a different type of material. The material I prefer. Um, right. 
But I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I will probably still buy it. I like the idea that he's going to be put up kind of up on a uh, higher base so that he's kind of looking down at everyone. Uh, so I right, like that Right, yeah, that's that going to be cool. Maybe that's he could come with, cool. ooh, an idea. Maybe he could come with um, a gray skull door maybe behind him. And then, <laughs> and then I would definitely pick him up. There you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What did, I, what did I miss at their booth? Well, um, uh, the uh, Comic Con exclusive Evil Lynn and the Comic well, Con exclusive Microbus. I, I was trying to think of the ones we hadn't already seen, but yeah, we got the I got the Microbusts, which were a three set in a special box of Mad at Arms, Tila, and Mechanic. And I really, I continue to really like the Microbusts. If this is the last set, which it most likely is. Uh, I'm going to miss it. I, I really enjoyed getting these. They were inexpensive. They were fun. And uh, I think that last set was probably probably the best uh, set of them so far, actually. So that was nice. And, of course, the exclusive Evil Inn, who uh, is done in classic colors. Woohoo! With, with the shade of, uh, or what is it, Shard of Darkness oh, around her neck? Yes. Instead of and Screech. The, instead of Screech, right. Yeah, Screech will be coming with the regular release of Evil In, so that'll be very, very cool. And that's good, too, because it really gives those of us who pick up the exclusives something to to look forward to other than a new paint scheme in the regular release, so I'm very pleased with the way that they decided to work that. I showed her to my friend Marcy last night, and she was just like, why is she yellow? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I had fun explaining that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of yellow Evil In, so... I am. She's classic. It's cool. All right. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to more things because we have so much stuff to cover. I think we need to give out uh, a shout out to, to Adrian and um, Jennifer, who are p- a part of a show called Fanatic in, that's going to be airing uh, in Canada that followed us around uh, a good portion of the day Friday. Um, all three of us were were interviewed, and they recorded us doing a little bit of the podcast. Um, the sh- the fanatic uh, show will do a show devoted to He Man and She Ra fans, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, um, that was lo- we'll be on it. So uh, if you're in if you're in the great land of Canada, check it out. Thankfully, we will be receiving copies on tape so that we can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> then also on Friday, yeah, when we find out when it's oh. airing, we'll let you know. Yes, yes, we'll definitely let you know so you guys can check it out. Now, on Friday, we also had the he uh, org dinner at Moose's. Now, that went over really well, I thought. Uh, we got we skipped get... right over the She-Ra panel. Um, that's because that coverage Absolutely. is in the next segment. Ah. ah we'll see. You should let yes. us know that. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, a, a big shout-out to hello to everyone that showed up to the he org dinner. I would say it was a success. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, after that, we all we all were what, what were we at an Irish pub at the end of the day? Yes, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Blarney something, I believe. That makes but it was sense. Very cool. <laughs> so we all hung out there, and um, as the evening went on, uh, so that was that was that was very very cool. All right, so now as Josh mentioned earlier. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Shira panel at uh, Comic Con. Um, it wasn't technically supposed to be uh, completely about Shira, but it ended up basically, I'd say, being about eighty-five to ninety ninety percent about about Shira. The Shira panel was hosted by Andy Mangles, who is directing the extra features content on the Filmation BCI uh, d- DVD releases. And then also sitting on the panel was, of course, Lou Scheimer and his daughter daughter Erica Scheimer. The man, Larry Dottilio. Yay, Larry! <laughs> co-creator, of course, of, of, of She-Ra. Uh, he's done it all, wrote for He-Man, She-Ra, and The Mike Young Show. Uh, we also had Tom Tataranowitz, storyboard artist, director um, on She-Ra. Always wants that Emmy. <laughs> um, we also had Michael Reeves, who did not write for She-Ra, but wrote for He-Man, New Adventures of He-Man, and The Mike Young Show. We had another man who represented the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon that was not done by Filmation, but will be put out by BCI Eclipse, and Jeff Hain representing BCI Eclipse. The panel was really, really, really fun, and uh, you weren't there, so I'm just going to give you a little teaser of some of the panel content now.
again for everyone who made the Shira panel happen. You know, it's always great to sit there with the people that were actually involved on the show and kind of have just a personal experience with them. After the panel, uh, all of us He-Man fans, He-Man and She-Ra fans, gathered outside to take a group picture. So we got a new He-Man.org group picture. We never ha- really had a group, a big group picture from San Diego. And Erica Scheimer joined us for the group picture. How kick-ass is that? I mean, that we was haven't... so cool. How yeah, I'm someone? sorry I missed out on that. I didn't end up in that picture. Mm-mm-mm. You're always Damn disappearing, it. sir. I know, I know. You're always disappearing. I've always got things to do and places to go in San Diego, so... Well, and no one tells me what you're up to. Well, um, I'm gonna blame you all. It's only, all your fault. Yeah, <laughs> I'm no one's babysitter. <laughs> when I go to these things, I'm there for one or two things. That's He-Man and She-Ra. I could care less about whatever else is going on. Although I will say, I did care about one other thing since Jennifer Love yes, Hewitt was did. there this year. So I did go get to meet <laughs> meet Jennifer Love Hewitt and have her sign a uh, a CD of hers. Uh, but other than that, I'm I'm basically only there for He-Man and She-Ra. I don't go to any of the other panels. I don't go looking for comic books. Uh, no offense to anyone that does, but I'm only there. For the power of Greece, well, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't go for uh, comics either. But yes, but you all jaunt off to your little Harry Potter things. But anyway, <laughs> let's get back on. Let's get back on. <laughs> back on topic, please. Um, <laughs> we I was very fortunate enough. I was able to interview some key players in uh, either the He Man and She Ra DVDs or people that actually worked on the shows themselves. So what's coming up now on Masters Cast? Interviews, baby. <laughs> we got some great ones this time. I have to apologize. Of course, remember, there will be some noise uh, in the background of these interviews. They were done on the convention floor via my portable microphone. Ooh. <laughs> High tech goes the shadow. Uh, <laughs> so we have upcoming for you now, we have interviews with James Etock, also known as Busta Tunes to the fans, who provided a lot of extra feature content for He Man and Shira DVDs? He's writing up, you know, all the um, all those Orco fun facts and all the character descriptions that you guys are loving on the DVDs. Not to mention, he also did extensive work on the overseas uh, contender He Man releases. So he's had his hand in a lot of that. And a big shout out! Definitely check out his blog at bustatunes.blogspot.com. Then we have an interview with Val Staples, who of course uh, owns He-Man.org and did all the coloring on these awesome He-Man and She-Ra DVDs. So all those vibrant colors, you're going to hear all about uh, what, why certain colors were picked and why they did the covers the way they did. Sadly, we were yay for pink. Oh, yay for pink. <laughs> Sadly, we were supposed to have an, an interview with Emiliano and Alessandra, who also do the art on the DVDs, but uh, uh, time constraints, I didn't get to get that in, so hopefully we'll have them on a future show for you guys. Um, but we do have uh, Eamon, who I'm not going to pronounce his last name because I'll do it wrong, who does the art for the um, overseas contender He-Man DVD releases, and he is doing the covers for the new Entertainment Rights DVD uh, releases of He-Man and She-Ra. Uh, so that is very cool. I have an interview with him. Then, drumroll please, an interview with the man, Larry Dettilio, who was nice enough to talk to me. And I really think he would have kept, continued to talk to me. Actually, we did talk probably for another uh, 40 minutes or so after the interview. So that was great. Larry was the nicest guy, so nice to the fans, and always ready to talk about the, you know, inner details of he and she <laughs> And then, of course... The piece of resistance, right? An interview with Lou and Erica Scheimer, Woo-hoo! which, of course, I will have to say was instrumented by uh, Katie there. Yeah, to- Mister, I can't the- remember what to say to them. <laughs> well, you know, when you're so starstruck when you're talking to Lou Scheimer it's, and, and Erica Scheimer, it's just like. <laughs> So uh, Katie got that interview to happen. We got that interview. And there's also a video of the interview on the website. So check that out, masterscast.com. You can stream it uh, so, so you can actually kind of get a feel of the con- convention floor. So thanks again to everyone who interviewed. And uh, roll that beautiful footage. All right, I am standing outside the sh- – well, actually, I am inside the she booth at San Diego Comic-Con right now. And I'm standing here with James Etock. You will know him as – Bust the tunes, and um, so how 
how exactly, what's the fan response? The fan response has been mainly positive, you know. I can't believe being interviewed. This sounds so funny. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, it's, it's all been very good. Um, so things are flying off the shelf. People have got free tattoos. Um, and buying the DVDs, uh, buying the T-shirt. So it's all going pretty well. Now, you actually work on the DVDs, all the Filmation DVDs, right? That is correct, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, it's, a oh. curse. it's a curse. Now, what all do you contribute to them? Um, with the DVDs, I do a lot of the character bios, the synopses, and all the trivia, as well as combining like a lot of material for the DVDs. The He-Man was probably the hardest DVD I've ever had to do, because all four DVDs were crazy. But um, at the moment, I'm doing the She-Ra stuff. I've just done Season 1, Volume 2, just finished all the work on that. So it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I'm doing Dungeons Dragons and other filmation, non-filmation-related products. Now, you also did a lot for the UK releases of He-Man, too, right? What did you do with those? Oh, that was... <laughs> Those were interesting. Uh, yeah, with those, I didn't do so much as the work on them. I did, um, I wrote a few profiles, but mainly my biggest contribution was the trivia, obviously. Uh, we, um, the, not the trivia, the commentaries, the episode commentaries. How was it like to record those? Those, those were a lot of fun, because the place where I recorded them, I actually ended up working full-time. So, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Ah, so it ended up getting you in a, a career. He-Man has got me so many careers. It's like, without He-Man, I'd probably be a bum on the street. Actually, maybe I should be sometimes. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 been, uh, it's been good to me, He-Man. Man. Started off as fun, a hobby, and now it's been my life, you know. All right, if you could describe Comic Con in like one oh, sentence, what would you say right now? <laughs> without swearing. Yes, without. This is a, this is a G rated program. Oh, sorry. Um, if He Man wouldn't say it, no. Oh, what would He Man say? Uh, it's it's um, quite an experience. Uh, excellent, I'd say. I came here last year, I loved it, and I've only been here like, what, a day and a half? Just about a day, really, and it's fantastic. So, highly recommend it. All right, man, thanks. Thank you very much, Sean. <laughs> all right, I am sitting here with Val Staples, who does all the DVD covers. He's coloring them. He's making them pop out. So, what what all are you doing uh, on the uh, DVDs, Val? Well, I'm working with Emiliana Santa Lucia to produce the packaging artwork for the DVDs that are coming out from BCI Eclipse. Um, I'm assisting with the coloring on the DVD as well as coordinating everything that happens with the DVDs in terms of delivery of the artwork, um, quality of the artwork, the content for questions and some of the trivia and that sort of stuff, even though James E. Talk is the one that's putting all that together. And I'm also coordinating currently the art cards for the Shira releases, and I'm also coloring a number of those over top of some of today's best artists. So the, the He-Man and She-Ra DVD covers really stand out on the shelf. So what do you think makes a good cover? Why do you choose like the colors and the layout that you do? Well, it's a it's a it's a complicated process. It's you know, one would think it was really easy to put what you want on there, but we have to coordinate this with a with a number of people. You know, it's not just what we want to do. We have to meet with BCI. We have to get entertainment rights approval. We have to have everybody's input on that works on the team. When we sit down and do a cover. It's all about character recognition, uh, clarity in the cover, recogni you know, recognizability, and just good composition. Uh, a lot of people wanted to see certain characters, certain scenes, or not when we did the DVDs. But when we sat down, the first and foremost priority was to use the most recognizable characters that the general populace would know. That's why you know, Season 1, Volume 1 just has He-Man. Season 1, Volume 2 just has Skeletor. And then there's just a trio of characters on the other the two covers uh, for the spines you know we used a different array of different spot colors fluorescence the intention there was that when shelves would spine out the volumes and when you walk down the shelves you can't help but recognize these fluorescent spines it was all about creating really bright and vibrant packaging that people couldn't help but notice and that also remin was reminiscent of the toy colors that were used during the original classic line what would you say is your favorite cover so far and favorite art card Ooh, favorite cover and favorite art card. That's a tough one. Uh, I really, I think I really enjoyed the season two, volume one, which was the the yellow scheme. Like that came out really nice. We we were playing around with that, and we had to we did several adjustments on it and went in several different directions, and that was what we settled on, and it it worked really nice. In terms of favorite art card, it would. That's it, really hard for me to 
to nail down because there's so many different artists that have worked on it, and there's so many of them that are that I, that I'm a fan of that I can't really say, oh, well, I prefer this one over another one. There's a couple art cards that haven't come out yet that I'm really partial to, and in the original batch, uh, I was I was I really liked the Bruce Tim one. I thought that was a great way to kick it off, and it was nice to see him uh, equate his new style to He-Man, even though he's such a different style back when he did the mini, mini comics. So it was was fun to see that. All right, thanks for talking with us. Uh, thank you for talking to me. All right, I am sitting here with... Emil Donahue. Who does the overseas DVD covers and art cards for the Australian releases. And I'm sure the fans would like to know, how did you uh, obtain this type of job? Um, about three years ago, I think, uh, I heard news that Contender were releasing the UK DVDs of He-Man and Masters of the Universe. So basically, I just pitched it to them. I just did a kind of a, a drawing. I said, well, this is what I'd do for your covers. And they locked on straight away. And the rest, as I say, is history, really. It was pretty exciting. What would you say is your favorite cover that you've done so far? Wow. Um, I think maybe the two most recent covers I've done, which were for volume 8 and 9, are probably my best because I'm honing my art a little bit better. I think fans can see that as well, that the, the covers get progressively better as, as, as it goes along. Some of the earlier ones were a bit questionable. The first one was still good, but some of the middle ones were a bit questionable. But by the time I get to, like, even six... Seven, eight, and nine. I think the, the the art is getting just a little bit better as it goes along. So we'll see what happens with the, with the, maybe at a season two if Contender decide to release it. Are you happy overall with the fan response to your art? Yeah, I'm very happy. Very happy actually. Um, it's it's kind of a. There's two different ways you can look at it. There's the contender covers, and then there's the um, the entertainment rights covers, which are two different styles. But contender kind of give me complete free reign to pretty much do whatever I want, and that way there's a lot more fan inter- interaction. So I come on the heman.org and ask what fans would they like, what would fans like to see on the next cover? They scream for many faces for the last one because it was the mystery of many faces. Oh, so they got many faces, and um, yeah. It's, but the entertainment rights covers are obviously a little bit more restrictive in that they're quite specific. And what kind of uh, characters or, or what kind of composition they kind of want. So, so still good, fun and all, but the contender ones are probably more fun to do. But I still really like doing the ER ones as well. All right, thanks, man. Thanks a lot for having me. All right, I am I am standing here with Larry Dettilio, who is a writer on He-Man and She-Ra and the Mike Young He-Man Show. He's done them all. Did you say hi to all the fans out there, Larry? Hi, fans. It's Larry Dettilio here. So what would you say was your favorite episode you worked on uh, on She-Ra? On She-Ra? Uh, I'd have to say probably the, the, the movie. Ah, the movie. Now, Keeping of the sword, which was not a movie. Of course not. Of course not. You know, otherwise, I would have written it better than, than it was in the movies. But, uh, yes, I really like doing the five-part. Uh, I have particular love for the uh, Crystal Castle episode uh, because I thought Lou was very good in that as Light Hope, and I, I like that. And then, uh, ooh, there was an episode with a Twigget and a Troll, but I forget what the name of it was. Uh, that was my that was my big uh, thing about racism on Shira, and uh, that was uh, not changed, although the moral was. <laughs> Uh, and that that I really like that show. I, I liked all the shows. That would you, would that you have changed anything in Secret of the Sword because you didn't get to write She-Ra Unchained? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I would have taken out the secret weapon in the in the middle of the yeah. thing. What happened, uh, of course, was that the filmation didn't think I could write five scripts. Now, why they thought I could write four and, and, and be helped out by a guy writing one right in the middle of the other two, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, it's, it, and you don't you don't notice it so much when the episodes run as they yeah. were meant to be shown. But when they're slapped together into a movie, and in the middle of it is kind of this other story that's like one off. It's kind of weird. So, uh, yeah, I would have changed that if I could have, but obviously I couldn't have. <laughs> uh, how about switching to the future? What was your favorite part of uh, the Mike Young show? Uh, well, what, my favorite part of it was uh, the animation was, was fairly spectacular, and they wanted to do continuity. And, um, and it was enjoyable working on it, at least for the first season it was. Uh, and I, I really I liked revisiting He-Man, and I really liked uh, what I did with Eva Lynn and, and her dad and all that stuff. Uh, and I thought I made some good contributions to the new He-Man. Oh, I 
you definitely did. Um, <laughs> you know, which didn't, uh, but uh, there was no place for it to go, really. I mean, I, I, I kind of, it, it, what happened, happened, you know. But it was, it was, a, it was a, bl a blast getting back and, and then seeing a lot of, that led to a, seeing a lot of people that used to be uh -huh. involved with He-Man as well. They all said, wait, we could get a job? <laughs> well, let's, let's run and get a job, you know. I did have to call them to get the job, but that's all right. That's how the business works, you know. So, yeah, I, I enjoy working on the new He-Man. I thought Mike Young did a real fabulous job on the animation. So it kind of felt like I could get that, the tough guy stuff I couldn't get during the 80s because it was being, because we were really being pilloried during the 80s uh, for violence. Uh, not that I, I, think, I don't think anybody could say He-Man was really that violent a show, you know, uh, until the new one, you know. Uh, not that I wouldn't have made it a violent show. Uh -huh. like because uh, it was a sword and sorcery That's thing, right, and yeah. I, I'm, I like sword and sorcery, and sword and sorcery means you got to swing a sword occasionally. That's right, that's you right. Know? you know? got to use it for something. And, uh, it's better than punching air. <laughs> <laughs> or punching the screen. Right. <laughs> Punch the camera. But save us a lot of time. Yep. And we wouldn't have to write big battle scenes. We'd just write T-Man punches to the camera. There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Pod, uh. pod people everywhere. <laughs> I am standing here at the tower booth with Erica Scheimer. And I'm watching this guy, and he keeps showing up. I'm Luke Scheimer. And how are you guys enjoying the uh, convention so far? I'm exhausted. I mean, I'm really enjoying it. It's, re it's really wonderful to see these people and to see what they have done and how you've affected them, them in their lives. It's, it's, it's heartwarming. I'd say it's about the most amazing thing to, to finally get to meet some of the fans face to face. And and to have a she come out and be alive all over again is the best thing in the world. Are you really happy on how well the she DVD is performing? Oh, well, the performance it's deserved because the DVD is so cool. They, I mean, it, it's so thrilling that they did such an awesome job um, with all of the, the DVD extras. And they, I, I just am really pretty amazed. So I'm excited to see everything. That's because she wrote a song for it, too. Well, yeah, this DVD happened to have the music video that I got to write and produce and so I'm really excited about that and to sort of reshare that actually it never really made the light of day until PCI put out these DVDs so as far as I'm concerned it's sort of my day for you and there's more music coming from me so stay tuned what do you say after that <laughs> right, enjoy the videos kid the DVDs will make you very happy. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. We've got the best fans, by the way. We all work. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again to everyone who interviewed. Big thanks to James Etock, Val Staples, Eamon, Lou, Erica, Larry Dottilio. Thank you so much for speaking with me. You guys really made Comic Con 2006 a great experience, wouldn't you guys say? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we couldn't ask for more. I would say this was the most, um, uh, this is the best. It was the most fun. Um, not only were they promoting She-Ra, but, I mean, they were still promoting uh, the other Filmation titles in He-Man. We got Larry this year. Tom Tataranowitz came back. I mean, we got Michael Reeves. We got Brooke Watchtel. Lots of different people that worked on He-Man and She-Ra that we got to meet. It was fantastic. Major, major, major props to BCI Eclipse. And I want to give a special thank you for... Uh, uh, the Tower Records people for putting up with all the He-Man and She-Ra fans that were walking right. through their booth. <laughs> we wouldn't leave, but we couldn't. It was so much fun. So, um, I, you know, I hope to see everyone next year. Uh, thanks for listening to our special uh, edition, Comic Con San Diego 2006, uh, reporting live. It was a new thing for us, reporting live. Uh, hopefully we'll also have some footage for you in two weeks from Wizard World Chicago 2006 that also has a Massive display of He-Man fans representing. <laughs> yeah, so, we'll definitely have some fun there. So come say Josh sadly won't be there, but come say hi to Katie and myself, who will probably be sitting at the MV Creations booth selling the Secret of the Sword DVD for most of the time, because as you know, <laughs> I am always, always ready to promote He-Man and She-Ra. <laughs> and don't forget, pick up She-Ra Best of DVD in stores now. I'm John Callis, also known as The Shadow. I'm Josh DeLioncourt, also known as Lioncourt. And I'm Katie Cartier, also known as Rainbow Bright. Shall we try a good journey, guys? Yeah, let's see <laughs> if we can get together this time. All right. On the count of three, perhaps that will help us.
One, two, three. Good, Good journey. journey. <laughs> Woohoo! I always screw it up. The train wanted to join in that time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, music. Ah, yes.